All right, let's dive in, shall we? We're tackling stakeholder needs today. Ooh, stakeholder needs. And you know what? You've sent a ton of sources our way on this one. Seems like you are really searching for that, that sweet spot, that balance. It's the eternal struggle, right? It is. Everybody wants their share in figuring out who gets what. Well, it can feel like you're walking on eggshells, let me tell you. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that jumped out from these sources right off the bat was this whole idea, maybe the customer isn't king after all. Oh, OK. Is that like business heresy? Are we allowed to even say that? It's interesting you say that because while customer focus... That's a buzzword. Everybody's heard it. Right. But these sources, they're pushing back a little bit on that. They're saying it's a little simplistic. Maybe we need to think about it more like a web, a stakeholder web. Okay. A web. I like this already. Tell me more. So picture, you know, a spider web. Intricate, all connected. Oh. Every single strand is like a different stakeholder group. Your customers, your employees, suppliers, investors, even the community. Right. Now imagine, just give one of those strands a little tug. What happens? The whole thing moves. Right. Exactly. It ripples out. And that's the whole point here. Every decision you make, every action, it impacts the entire ecosystem of stakeholders. That's such a good point. And there's this one visual that really brought this home for me from the sources. It showed all these different stakeholders, like feeding into a company's decision. You've got government regulations on one side, shareholder demands on the other. It's a lot. Right. It's a lot to unpack. So where do you even begin to make sense of it all? Well, I think the first step is really understanding that each of those groups, they come with their own set of needs, their own expectations. Oh, of course. Customers, they might be all about affordability, right? right? Or maybe top-notch quality is their thing. Employees, they want fair wages, job security. Investors, they want to see those returns. Right. Makes sense. And the community, well, they might be worried about the environmental impact. Absolutely. So everybody at the table wants something a little different. That's a lot of different needs. It's not like a recipe for, for a clash. It can be. How do you reconcile all that? And that's where things get interesting. One of your sources, it uses this phrase that really stood out to me, stakeholder hierarchy. Like there's actually a ranking. A hierarchy? Okay, now that sounds intense. Right. Like who outranks who yeah. in the grand scheme of things. It's not quite as, you know, rigid as all that, but the idea is that certain stakeholders, they might carry more weight in certain situations. Okay. Sometimes it's the law, right? You think about regulations, companies have to follow those. Other times it's an ethical thing. Maybe you prioritize employee safety over saving a quick buck. Yeah. You know, those are the tough calls. So it's not just about, okay, these are our stakeholders. It's about understanding in what context. Absolutely. They, they carry more weight. Okay. And you know what helps with that? That stakeholder matrix you had in your sources? Ah, yes. Oh. The matrix. I'll be honest, at first glance, all those boxes and arrows, I thought I was back in high school algebra. It can be a little intimidating. Not my favorite memories, let me tell you. <laughs> but once I, you know, wrap my head around it, it actually clicked. Yeah. It was yeah. very helpful. It's about visually getting it, you know? Mm -hmm. Because stakeholder relationships, they're messy, they're complicated. Mm -hmm. And that matrix, it just lays it all out there. It really makes you confront those potential conflicts. Oh, for sure. And it's not like you can just, poof, make the conflict disappear, right? Right. But at least you can you can see it coming. Exactly. You get ahead of it, be proactive instead of, oh, no, what do we do now? Right. So you're not just reacting all the time. You're actually thinking strategically. And your sources, they had some good practical tips for how to actually manage all these competing interests. Okay, yeah. Let's get practical. Let's hear them. What are we talking about here? Well, one thing that came up again and again, communication is key. Okay. And not just, you know, sending out an email every once in a while. It's about constant dialogue with those key stakeholders. Keeping everybody in the loop, even when you can't give them everything they want. Right. Because you can't please everyone all the time. Never going to happen. Right. But you can be transparent. You can explain why you're making the decisions you're making. I like that. Transparency. If you have to make a trade-off, and let's be real, that happens all the time in business. Right. If it's going to impact one group more than another, at least they know you've considered their perspective. Right. right. It builds trust that way. Exactly. Even when it's a little messy and imperfect. That's the real world, right? That is the real world. Exactly. Now, one more thing I wanted to touch on from the sources, this idea of giving employees the power to be these stakeholder champions. Yes, this is a good one. What do we even mean by that? Your sources, they really emphasize how important it is to equip your team 
to handle those stakeholder interactions on their own. Okay. After all, they're often the ones on the front lines dealing directly with these different groups. Day in, day out. Yep. So it's like giving them the tools to navigate those little webs, those little stakeholder webs. Exactly. They're mini webs within the bigger web. And the confidence to do it well. Because when your team, they buy into this idea of stakeholder harmony and yeah. they know how to make it happen. Well, that's when the magic really starts to happen. That's when you're really cooking with gas. Okay. I like that analogy. Okay. So we've talked about visualizing the stakeholder web. We talked about these hierarchies, mm. mapping conflicts, getting our team on board. It's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. But I have to ask, you know, the sources talk a lot about the usual suspects, customers, investors, employees, the big players. But what about those stakeholders that we don't always yeah. think about huh. what about the community the environment we got to think about them too right they've got skin in the game too right they absolutely do and it's interesting you know your sources they touch on this they call them the unseen stakeholders yeah unseen stakeholders i like yeah that. they're like those those hidden strands in that web we were talking about all right right you don't always see them but but you feel the impact okay so we're so used to you know heads down Got to meet our quarterly goals. Got to keep these stakeholders happy. Like the day to day. How do we zoom out? Yeah. How do we remember those those unseen stakeholders, those those bigger picture concerns? Well, one of your sources had this analogy that I thought was really powerful. It talked about like a pebble, right? Okay. You throw a pebble in a pond, what happens? Those ripples, right? As well, yeah. And our decisions, our actions, they have those ripples too. Consequences we might not even see right away. So how do we get better at? recognizing those ripples. Yeah. Because I get it. We all we all know, oh yeah, think about the environment, think about the future. But how do we actually put that into practice? Well, it's about more than just acknowledging it, right? It has to be baked into how we make decisions from start to finish. So like if we're making a big decision, we can't just be thinking about the bottom line. You have to think about, okay, what's the impact going to be on the community? What about, you know, down the road? Right. Are we leaving things better than we found them? Exactly. It might mean, you know, choosing the sustainable material, even if it costs a little more upfront. Maybe it means investing in those local programs, even if it doesn't translate to an immediate boost to your profits. This is stakeholder harmony on a whole other level. This isn't just balancing competing interests. It's about the greater good. And I think that's a powerful message to end on. It is. Because when we broaden our definition of success, right, when it includes all those stakeholders, seen and unseen, that's how we build businesses that are good for everyone, not just the bottom line. That's how we make sure those ripples, they go out in the right direction. Oh. This has been fantastic. So much to think about. It's been a pleasure. Really enjoyed this. Thank you for, for lending your expertise to this deep dive. And to you, dear listener, thank you for, for coming on this journey with us. We hope you walked away with some, some new tools, some new insights to navigate your own stakeholder landscape. We'll see you next time for another deep dive. Mm -hmm.